This is Isaac Morehouse. Welcome to the podcast where we discuss education, entrepreneurship, big ideas, how to put them into practice in the real world, and above all, how to live free. Okay, today I am joined by a very special guest, uh, my son, NL Morehouse. What's up? Welcome to the podcast, NL. Thank you. I've let Ike to be here on a while now, yeah. but I've been looking for a time that's convenient for me. Yeah, you're a pretty tough guy to schedule. I had to call your secretary <laughs> three times. I don't have a secretary. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. So, um, first, why don't you, well, let, let's, let me just introduce you briefly. NL is 10 years old. Uh, N L the letters N and L yes. are uh, his chosen name, mm-hmm. and um, I don't know what to say about. I mean, you're probably the most imaginative, independent, and creative person that I know, and I don't say that lightly. I, I mean that not just because you're my son, um, but you wanted to. You you came to me and said you'd like to come on and do an episode of the podcast about unschooling. Yes, I liked it enough, and I thought it'd be cool to be on an episode. What made you want to come on and and talk about unschooling? I don't know, really. I was just listening to it, and what I felt like was, like, I'm sure people can take your word from this, but what if they actually, like, heard what a kid's opinion of how unschooling is going for it, or him or her is? Yeah, there's you, you thought it'd be cool to have somebody hear from your perspective because yes. you're in the middle of it. Mm-hmm. So um, that's what we're here to talk about. Can you, let's just start by what is a typical day like for you as an unschooler? Well, I get up, I wait until you guys get up, so I... Maybe I'll draw, I'll see if there's anything on TV. I'll, I'll like, try out Minecraft, a game I really like. And then once you get up, sort of the usual routine, I guess. I mean, not much to say. Which is what, like breakfast, shower, you do a couple chores most of the time. Yes, and then I'll either get, well, I'll get, like, two hours to be on YouTube or something and watch videos on there once I've done like a lesson or something. So and I'll basically be on there and I guess at the end of the day I go to my friend's house. Kind of a simple routine. So there is some structure because we have sort of a, like you're not allowed to start watching your YouTube videos until you've eaten and usually showered and done a few chores or something like that. Yeah, but it's definitely not really well scheduled like not seriously scheduled it I can do a lot with my day now do you find that that lack of structure does that make your day feel chaotic or do you actually have a structure that you give to yourself I give to myself a structure which is only easy to do well the day has started beginning because I can't really think about it at, ahead of time I really like Go with the flow. So you kind of just take the day as it comes. I I mean, I noticed that even if you're just doing whatever you want, you usually have some pretty identifiable patterns. Like you'll take a break from your computer and then you'll go outside and do some imagining and and some walking around. Yes, because there's a lot of imagining I have to get out after I've seen a lot of like things on the internet that inspire me. Because when I grow up, I want to make video games. Well, I want to come back to that in a minute. Yeah. But, but first, mm-hmm. tell me about, okay, so you're just going on YouTube, you're going on the internet, yeah. and just kind of watching whatever you want? Like that, No, what, what, I have like a certain, like, certain um, people on there that I like to watch that like do games I like, like Minecraft So they, So they're, they're making reviews of video games on YouTube? Yes. Or, or like walkthroughs or, of playing the game? I don't really watch walkthroughs anymore. I just like to see rant and this that people just mess around with the game and what it can do. So it's, it's pretty much all videos of people exploring different video games? Yes, and then sometimes I'll just do a game called Roblox. So after you watch, you know, a lot of videos and things... You said you have a lot of imagining to do. Yes. What is that all about? Mm, Well, I just go outside and 
Like, I only need, like, well, I kind of need a habitat to imagine, one that I get used to, one that, because for some reason, the way that I imagine well and think about all this interesting stuff and ideas I have well is actually by running around and moving, sometimes moving my hands to imagine, like, something that someone is doing in the thing I imagine. It's like the easiest way for me to be able to picture that. So it's it's a very active process. You're kind of like really lost in your imagination while you're thinking about these things. Yes. And it's primarily video games that you're thinking about yes. that you want to create someday. And then sometimes I'm like, oh no, there's a bunch of neighbors outside. They probably think I'm a psycho. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, all right, so let me ask you, do you ever, as, as an unschooler, do you ever worry that you won't learn things that you need to know? Well, I've always thought about that to myself. I've sometimes, like, I thought, what if this makes me dumb? But then something I think about is that if I ever, like, came to something where I really did need to learn those things, those sorts of things, like math and stuff, I would teach, I would like teach myself that and just think about it. And I'm sure eventually I would be able to figure it out. I'd probably need some help, but when I can, if I come across something that really needs me to learn math or something like that to understand or not get ripped off, then I would try to learn more about it. So I would be able to be cautious about it. So you kind of see learning those types of skills and knowledge as something that you'll do only if and when it's valuable for you. And yeah, you, you don't want to just do it just for the heck of it. What if I like, what if someone like just say, I'm talking right here as a kid that goes to public school and imagine what he's thinking, he or she is, what if all of these things they're saying they'll have to learn to get a job and all of these things that they make me learn in school, what if, depending on the job that I'm going to get, this stuff has nothing to do at all with the job that I want and it won't help at all? And yeah, so that would feel like a huge waste if you were, if you were made to learn things that may not end up being valuable to you at all. Yes, exactly. So you mentioned you want to have a video game company. Tell me a little yes. bit more about that. What, what are your sort of plans and dreams? You know, I'm not going to exactly dive straight into it because I want people to enjoy my games. Now, the main thing is that it would be good because it's a job and I'd be able to make money if people like my games. But the true reason I want to make games is just for people's entertainment. And, well... I guess that's kind of it. I mean, I think first, before just going into making my business, I might work at a popular game business to learn a lot of things I need to know. So what kind of, uh, what kind of game? So you have some skills now, like you're, you're very, you have great skills that I think coming up with storylines yes, and I characters, like storylines and, and illustrations. I, yeah. Do you think you're going to have to need to learn, like, programming and, and graphic design? Like I said before about math, like, as I'm a kid, I don't think it matters as much. Because I ha haven't even started my business yet. That's, like, what I'm going to do when I grow up. But when the time comes that I'm like, I think I'm going to start my business. Or, like, maybe I'm going to one of those game companies to learn all these things, then I'll probably see that is the time I should go to some sort of coding place, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. I No, that, that makes sense. So is it hard... Is it hard to make friends? A lot of people say, well, if you homeschool or you unschool, you won't have any social life. Uh, you won't be around other kids, other people, and you won't learn how to like hang out with them and, and make friends. Is that is that a challenge, being unschooled? Yes. A long time ago, I didn't have any friends. I was really sad about it. But then, 
I just had to accept it instead of just being all quiet. Like, someone asked me if they, they wanted to, if, like, I wanted to play with them. And I said yes. And thanks to me saying yes, now um, he's my best friend who I've known for almost two years. And, uh, yeah, so you're you're kind of... You're kind of an introvert in some yes. ways. Uh, you're, I wouldn't say necessarily shy, but like you don't naturally just go out and start introducing yourself yes, to people. Yes, because I don't want to just make a bunch of people that I think are my friends, but are actually really big jerks, which is a kind of a problem my best friend has. He thinks that a lot of people are his friends, but they're actually bad influences and like really big jerks but I'm not saying here be quiet to anyone and who comes up to you and asks to be friends that's not what I'm saying at all you just mean like yeah you're kind of selective you want to be you want to take time and figure out yeah if, if there's someone like I'd actually want to be friends yeah. with them what's the hardest part about being unschooled that is a really hard question and I mean that is a hard thing to think of, but, hmm. Like, is there ever, are there ever things that make you wish you went to school? I don't think there ever have been. What's the, what's the best part about being unschooled? What's the part that makes you say, I'm really glad that I don't go to school? Because they're just so controlling. And if you express your creativity in some way that isn't, Buy their big book of nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see that book. <laughs> yeah, then they will, like, put you in the principal's office for having an idea slightly less similar to what they're forcing you to learn. Is and that... I like to think however I want about things and not just be, like, told how to think basically like molded into this robot that does exactly what everyone else does now is this this vision of school that you have is that from tv shows or things your friends have said how, how do you get the idea of what school is like well from all of the things i've heard like at first i was like like when i was younger i just thought i don't want to go to school it sounds bull and now I've like gotten more deeper opinions from lots of influence of mostly you, Dad. You've like made me change my opinions on things even more. Do and you... I've just thought over time, yeah, I. Why do I even need to go to school? Why can't I teach myself? Because it's not like because everyone became smart in cave times like a long time ago we didn't have schools they taught themselves and they learned everything they needed to know to survive they made all of these inventions so and they didn't really have schools then do you feel like i try to like i try to change your mind and and your opinion and like persuade you or force you to to believe the same things i do no, I agree with a lot of your ideas, honestly. And it's not just because you're my dad. Like, when I hear those, like, it makes so much sense to me. Do you think I would be... Do you think me and Mom would be disappointed if you said, Hey, guys, I want to go to school next year? Well, I've actually asked you guys... Like, I've asked Mom and, like, what her opinion would be. And she said she'd be fine with it, but... What would you be like if I said I wanted to go to school? Yeah, I'd let you go. I mean, it's that hard thing as a parent. Like, I never want to, I never want to like indoctrinate you with my ideas or make you feel like you have to do things that I think are good or I'll be disappointed. Mm -hmm. But it, it's a hard thing if if your kid says yeah. I, I want to do something and I think, yeah, I don't think they'll like it. My goal is to always just back off and let you experiment with it yourself. Just just like when you've done sports that you've wanted mm -hmm. to quit them, even though I thought, oh, I bet he'd like it if he kept doing it. I felt like it was better for me to just let you make that choice. Yeah, the honest truth, I don't ever feel that I want to go to school, though. Like, but if there's ever some reason that I would want to, like, I would ask you, I wouldn't just stay silent because you're proud that I agree with your ideas. 
I don't agree with you about Aquaman. <laughs> Maybe hey, should. that's because you you don't listen to a lot of the things about him. I'm a close-minded old man. We should we should save that one for a different time. <laughs> things will get out of hand. Um, I mean, what do you think? If there are parents out there who are thinking about homeschooling or unschooling their kids, but they're a little bit worried about it, or there are kids who are thinking about it, but they're a little bit scared, do you have any thoughts or advice for them? Hmm. Well, advice from me, I don't, I don't know. Like, I feel like the best thing to do is not instantly say no to it because it's something new. Or, like, if you're scared of it, just don't instantly say no. At least give it a small chance and you might find out it's a way better way than the old way that you did things. And it, like, if you just give it a chance, which I know this can be hard for people who have thought the same way about schooling for a long time, but if you at least try to, you might slowly see it's a, it's better than making your kids go off to school. Um, when we started homeschooling you, we had like all, all kinds of curricula. Yeah. We had a lot of different lessons and plans and math mm-hmm. and science and all this stuff. And we just gradually started doing less and less to yes. where we kind of became unschooled. And what, I taught myself all the things you had been trying to make me learn That is for true. Years. We, we fought with you to try to teach you how to read for a long time. And finally, we just gave up. And like two months later, you were reading Kelvin and Hobbes to yes. yourself. So, so was that... When we were doing more of a curriculum, do you remember, do you, like, what did that feel like? Did you like it, or did you did you just hate it from day one? Do, or do you ever uh, feel now, like, there's you wish there I was more structure? Like, I didn't like it at all, because I was just sitting there, and I thought, can I please be done? I'd like to, to go and think about things, or, like, I'd like to take a rest, but you guys said no not until you like finish seven more activities or something there were all of these online curriculums flashcards books and the honest thing i didn't feel like they were teaching me anything i just felt like it was some way for you to keep me from walking away and just to keep me sitting down but that's only when I was younger. Like that's when I used. But to, that's how I viewed it. I used it. to stand over your shoulder and, and yell out in a Cockney accent, "You can't have your pudding you until you it. finish your meat." I don't think you did that. I kind of wanted to. That was always <laughs> one of my dreams. Um, <laughs> so, um, do you think there are certain things that every child just absolutely needs to know that they should all be made to know? I don't think you should be made to know anything. But if there was anything someone should definitely know, it's to be true to themselves. I mean, like... That sounds like a cat poster. <laughs> <laughs> no, what do, you, what do you mean by that? I mean, like, be honest with yourself and don't just say, well, that's what they all say I have to do, so I, I need to do it, and ignore the feeling maybe, maybe you shouldn't, like... Be honest to yourself. Just don't do things because everyone else does it or because just you're told to. Don't jump off a cliff when every other kid is. (laughs) That's uh, one of those lessons you don't get a second chance on. Yeah. (laughs) Um, Is that that ever hard? Do you ever feel like kind of lonely doing your own thing? Hmm. I don't know. I don't know if I have. I mean, you've got a, you've got a, a. Like sometimes I feel really bored and upset because all of my friends are have like different things to do. Yeah, I guess sometimes I'm lonely, but that's usually when I like ride my bike out there, and even if there's people I don't necessarily like, just like acquaintances, it's nice to socialize. Is it hard for you that during the day? Almost every other kid is in school and, and busy doing stuff, so there's not that many kids around. I'm so used to it since, like, the first time I knew that when I 
met my best friend TJ and I knew like he went to public school which now they homeschool but yeah I got pretty used to it though hmm. I already like now when school's out I make the most of it I'll just do like what I usually do until school's out so um do you think that do, do, do you ever, I guess, do you ever get people saying things like, like asking you questions or, or being like rude or misunderstanding about the fact that you don't go to school? There's lots of people that I've met, mostly kids, who judge me because I go to school because they've, I mean, they, I don't go to school because they've never seen that before. And they treat me like I'm someone who's really ignorant, like I don't understand the cruel words they're saying to me. <laughs> so they can just say whatever they want. Is that, uh, that's gotta be pretty frustrating. Yeah. But I just, I just try to outsmart them, basically. <laughs> what does that look like? <laughs> Alright, so if someone said, athletic people get a better life, and I say, so do pe- so do people that uh, don't judge other people. <laughs> That's a good retort. Because you're not really into sports that much. Yeah. You're more of a... But they act like I have to go to sports. You're more of like a creative guy. Um, well, do you have any other, like, I don't know, final thoughts you want to leave with, with us? Mm, not really. That's it. That's your final word of wisdom. Not really, huh? Yeah. <laughs> do you think, do you plan to have kids someday? Yes. What do you think you'll do for their education? I'll try to do what, like, you guys have done for me, but not fully because that's what you did for me. Like, if there's one thing that I find I probably didn't like about the way that I was um, schooled or just, like, treated... I might change that with the way that I parent my kids. You mean like how we had how we had more structure at first? Yeah, I wouldn't just like parent my kids the way that you guys do now or before just because that's the way you guys do. Oh, did. I see. So so you kind of don't know yet exactly how you'll parent your kids and you don't want to just repeat what we've done just yeah. because that's how you grew up. It's a long time to think about how I'll parent. I'm only 10 years old. Yeah. No, yeah, absolutely. I think that I think that makes sense. Yeah, I never really thought about it until we had kids and then yeah, I probably took too long to to start thinking in a smart way about it even then. Yeah. Hopefully you don't suffer too much because of it. <laughs> I don't suffer. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, NL, for uh, coming on. You don't have your website or gaming company up yet. If you did, I would tell our listeners where they could find you. But I'm sure uh, over time you probably will. I wouldn't be surprised to see a YouTube channel or something. <laughs> yeah, it's like people are going to save this as like a recording forever just to wait for that year like way <laughs> later when I'm a girl and I have that. Yeah, we can bring you back on the show if I still have a show. In this museum you will see many ancient things such as a podcast as old as time itself. <laughs> now that the company is finally up, you should be able to see the mentioned Greenleaf in this podcast. Greenleaf Gaming, that's, yeah. your, that's the company you want, isn't it? <laughs> I like it. Maybe this will be in a museum someday. That's yeah. my goal. Well, Podcasts in a museum. Well, who knows? It could be in the futuristic museums. The distant future. <laughs> yeah. You never know. Hey, thanks for coming on the show, buddy. Bye.